John Ross came from a very influential family with rich holdings in this area. He was able to not only be educated through the grammar school and the high school, he was a college graduate. He was able to go to Washington, D.C. and sit right in with the Congress up there and the likes of Andrew Jackson, people like that, and fight for the Indian rights. He fought as long as he could. He was actually put out of his own house when he came back from a trip to Washington. At that time, he had moved to Rome, Georgia, but when he came back from Washington on one of those trips, right before the removal, he was met at the door by a family and said, you can't come in here, you don't own this house anymore. That's the way it went. The Cherokees were treated terribly. They had no rights whatsoever. And John Ross really fought hard against that fact. Up until 1830, of course, Andrew Jackson, you know, he had been elected president. The state of Georgia was pushing him to have the Indians removed like they were promised in 1802. Andrew Jackson realized that he could not violate the Constitution by removing them without federal law saying that he could do it. So he pushed to have this Indian Removal Act of 1830 through. When that was done, Andrew Jackson was cleared to remove the Indians. Even after the act was passed, John Ross still believed somewhere in his mind that he could persuade the Congress and get Andrew Jackson off his back enough to keep his people in this area. He fought on and on up until the very end, the very end. They went virtually house to house uh, on into the area here, and everybody they found working in the fields, fishing, sitting on their front porch, cooking their dinner, whatever, they removed them physically from their premises, allowed them to take minor things with them, no animals, probably took everything they had more or less just away from them and removed them from their houses and rounded them up, put them in stockades around the area, various stockades, and eventually they marched them all to Oklahoma. John Ross was part of that march. He was married to an Indian lady named Kwati. He actually lived at that time in a little bitty cabin. He'd already been put out of his home, like I said earlier, and he lived in a little bitty cabin up here in Red Clay, around close to Cleveland, Tennessee, about 10 miles up the road but he was rounded up just like everybody else and he went with his people and his wife died on the trip and is buried in Little Rock, Arkansas.